This video is supported by patrons like you. If you'd like to become a patron, please head over to patreon.com forward slash Matt Jarbo. Just a dollar per month is a great way to say F you to the access media. All right, let's be real. Let's be honest for a second. When we talk about The Last Jedi and many of us criticize the movie for its narrative choices because they just made no sense whatsoever, even in the grander context of things, as we know it right now, they still didn't make any sense. It didn't really move the needle forward. It wasted time, it wasted money, it wasted a lot of things. I would argue that one person, one character, ended up getting the brunt of that, very similar to Jar Jar Binks, and, I, and, and that's, it's Rose Tico. Rose Tico, let's be fair, has been just utterly crapped on as a character, and a lot of that has kind of rolled over to, uh, really, I would say, kind of going after Kelly Marie Tran herself. People out there really hate Rose Tico, and it's not Kelly Marie Tran's fault. It's Ryan Johnson's inability to write a good character that's the fault. But apparently J.J. realizing that he needs Rose Tico for this movie, or at least they feel obligated to put Rose Tico in this movie because of everything that happened and because they've made a bunch of toys and they they built her up as a new character. Um, she apparently might have a bigger role in, in The Rise of Skywalker than we, we realize. So this is what uh, an article that came out today uh, from Digital Spy that says Star Wars actor teases Rose's big new role in The Rise of Skywalker. Now, I find that very hard to believe. And I say that only because she was in one shot in the final trailer and she was on Triple Force Friday uh, with Naomi Aki and they were looking at their toys and that was really about it. There was really nothing else there that was uh, that was really happening. So we... I mean, like that they've just been like, oh, she was also at, I believe she was at Celebration. Uh, she popped up very briefly D23, but there's been nothing with Rose. And I don't know if that's because they're like, they're shielding her. They're trying to protect her uh, because of the, uh, of, of the backlash against the last Jedi. And part of me kind of understands it. However, it doesn't necessarily seem like that's like what should be done. You know, I, I I'm okay with the character existing, I just want her to be written better. And it's possible that this time around, they they maybe decided to do that. So uh, she says here in an interview with a, a digital spy, uh, Tran revealed the difference between the Rose we met in The Last Jedi and how she's changed in The Rise of Skywalker. Saying before, Rose was a new character who was in maintenance and she was not a huge part of the Resistance. But now she's in the Resistance in a big way. It's very cool. And this is her uh, right here. And, uh, you know, her looking like she's got a little bit of battle experience and whatnot. And and I was kind of I read, I read that and I'm like in a big way. But you, I've seen like one behind the scenes photo of her talking to Ray. And uh, there's this one shot of her in the trailer. And there's been nothing else with Rose Tico. So what exactly are they doing uh, that's going to be in a big in a big way? I mean, we know the likelihood of her being with Finn still, is, I, I would actually probably argue, is not going to happen. I mean, at the end of The Last Jedi, she's like, we have to protect the ones that we love. And she kisses him as the Death Star, mini Death Star cannon, blows up a door to a base and like a bunch of her friends die. Because, you know, love. Um, but <laughs> but it says here, she spoke about the training that she went through, uh, her and her fellow stars had to go through in order to be prepared for the movie. She says, I had to learn everything to do with being in a war, like holding a gun. I've never held a gun before. Things like that. You don't even think about it when you're watching this movie. We're all real people living real lives. And it kind of, for some reason, invoked the memory of what the cast went through when prepping for, um, when, when prepping for Saving Private Ryan, they they went to boot camp for like seven weeks, you know, like Vin Diesel, Giovanni Ribisi, Barry Pepper. Uh, they all went to boot camp for like seven weeks in order to be prepared for the movie, in order to be able to go out there and do it. And we know that, cele that the actors, I don't want to say celebrities, but like actors go through certain types of training in order to be prepared to, to, to look a certain way in the movie. Now, if they're going to have Rose Tico do anything, I mean, they wouldn't put her through that unless she actually had a part to play. But she, this is this is where it gets a little bit weird. This is a line here that I think is interesting. She says, we don't shoot arrows off horses normally, so we have to learn every little thing. There's so much detail and so much work that goes into everything. Now, the horses thing really kind of got me. So here's, here's what I'm wondering, okay? Here's what I'm wondering. Is there going to be a love triangle between Rose and Finn and Janna? 
Because in all the marketing that we've seen with Finn and Jonna, they've been together. In a lot of the shots, they've been together. And it does seem like they're pairing them up. It really does. I mean, we know that Finn clearly loves Ray or he likes Ray and whatever. And, and that was meant to be part of the love triangle uh, for Finn's character, you know, Rose, Finn and Ray uh, coming off the last Jedi. This takes place about a year or some change later. We don't quite know where things have ended up in regards to all that. We have no way of knowing what's going on, but that's just where where I kind of perceive things to be. And then and then now we we add Jonna to the mix. And so is it going to be because clearly it's not going to be Finn and Ray. It's not going to be Finn and Ray, but it could be Finn and and Rose and Jonna. And I don't I don't know. I, I just find it weird. But when she talks about the horses and we have that shot from the trailer of Jonna and Finn on horses leading the charge on the whole of the Star Destroyer, which the physics of that still still bother me. And I'm really waiting to see precisely how it all comes together, because that just makes me want to scratch my damn head. Uh, that really does. But, you know, is it possible that that Rose is going to get on a horse that that Finn might find himself in trouble and Rose has to ride a horse into battle in order to save Finn because they're ultimately meant to be together? And I think that coming off the end of The Last Jedi, I, I really do think that I actually really think that's an episode. I think they trained Rose Tico in order to have a, a hero moment in the final battle where she's got to save Finn uh, before, before he dies. And I think that's, again, once again, she's probably going to come in and save the day again, which is going to anger a lot of people. It is, it's going to anger a lot of people if that happens, but I can see it happening because star Wars, if is nothing, if not cyclical in events, because the force tends to repeat itself quite often. And this could be something to where it's not like Finn's going to sacrifice himself, but he could just be in danger. And she shows up to help us ass out again. Um, you know, cause that was still something that a lot of people got mad about in the last Jedi. Like he's going to have his hero moment. He's going to sacrifice. He's going to die. He's going to save the day. And then she just, she just like cock blocks him. You know, she just, she just takes him out. Cause she, she wants some of that sweet Finn, Finn loving, uh, you know, and I, I mean, you can't look, she's thirsty. She's clearly thirsty for Finn, at least in the last Jedi. So you can kind of understand why she did what she did. You know, I don't want to call her like a femme cell or nothing, but uh, it feels like she might have forced him into a relationship because she can just play the card of, well, you were going to die. I saved you. <laughs> Never mind that a bunch of our bunch of our allies died. You know, I mean, eh. but uh, but mommy wants a little bit of that sweet, sweet, dark chocolate. You know what I mean? Because that's kind of like how I took it. Anyway, um, I here's. <laughs> Anyway, if if uh, if <laughs> if Rose is uh, is given more th more things to do, she's given a, a rounded character arc, and and it makes sense. Uh, I think audiences, fans specifically, uh, who didn't care for her in the Last Jedi, maybe will find themselves a bit more uh, a bit a bit more warming. They'll warm up to her a bit more, and I and I think that could be okay. I don't I don't hate the character. I just want her to have better things to do. Uh, under under the guy, you know, under the tutelage, I should say, or under the the care of a better writer who wants to tell uh, a fun story uh, versus something that subverts expectations. Anyway, uh, Rose Tico, big plot, big arc, little arc. How how much of the movie do you think she's going to be in? The leaks haven't really, they didn't say much about her at all. Uh, so it's kind of like, who knows where things are going to go? And again, your thoughts, your opinions, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, if you guys are supporting the Patreon again, thank you so much. Really appreciate the new people that have joined up and I will talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day. Love you lots and peace out.